Hi, and welcome back to the Save It From Hearts channel. Today we've got another obscure ancient gadget courtesy of Axeman Surplus, the best store in the universe, or at least the best store in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. Now I'm not sponsored by Axeman, although I do like to buy random junk from them. And today is no different. We've got whatever this thing is. It says it's an Alnor Pyrocon. Now you may remember in my last Axeman junk video I got a pyrometer. Uh, this is a Pyrocon. We're seeing a, a little bit of a theme here. Now, I didn't go out and set out to buy thermometer or fire-related devices, but anytime they have some weird old instrument like this, I just can't resist it. This one was uh, $9.95. Comes in this lovely blue plastic-ish case. And, um, unfortunately, is filled with this disgusting, decaying green foam. So, I think the first order business is to get rid of all the foam, vacuum this out, clean it up, see what we actually have. All right, I've gotten some of that nasty green foam out of there. You can never really get all of it out, and I'm sure I'm getting cancer just from being in the same room with it. I also would like to apologize for the background noise. I'm running a bunch of 3D prints right now, and I own the world's loudest 3D printer. The good old Noisemaker bot. I wasn't even looking for anything like this at Axeman. I actually stopped in to look for a power supply for this antique Macintosh that I found on the side of the road, but, um... They didn't have that, but they had whatever this is. This, as usual, did not come with any instruction manual, and I barely know what it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to assemble this and see if it works without knowing anything about it. It looks fairly simple. I bet we can figure this out. So it's obviously some kind of thermometer because it has a Fahrenheit dial here. Pyrocon hints to me that this is fire-related or heat-related in some way, like the pyrometer. And um, the main unit here is very, very simple. There's obviously the dial, there's a little adjustment, there's this handle, and there's there's really nothing else. There's this interesting clip here, and I'm noticing that it's in two pieces with little insulating spacers in between. So I bet these are conductors. I bet this is two parts of an electrical connection. So, get this other stuff that was in the box here. And I'm also noticing, looking closely at this, everything is also in two parts electrically insulated from each other. So there are two little wires that come up. There's this interesting layered bracket. So each side of this bracket appears to be a different polarity. And then uh, there's this little thing with what I bet is a thermocouple at the end. So that is probably an electrical heat sensor that takes heat, turns it into a voltage, sends it back down this wire, and then probably sends a different side of the voltage to each of these parts here. Notice this screws in and out, and what I think happens is we take this, put it right in there, and screw it down until it's tight. So, again, I'm guessing on all of this, and there is no manual for this. I didn't even cheat and look this up on Google. I'm just kind of intuitively figuring out how this thing goes together. Again, it looks really simple. That pyrometer that we had before, that was very simple. This is even simpler. There's no moving parts other than the dial. There's no power. There's no batteries. All the electricity is coming directly from the heat, or so I think. It does start down at zero Fahrenheit. Can we get it to come up with just body heat if I touch this? And the dial did go up a little bit. Yeah, there goes our dial. So this thing definitely seems to work. Although, I'm a little suspicious that this isn't supposed to look like this. I'm wondering if this is actually broken because it's kind of loose in there and um, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be exposed like that. Well, this did come with another little piece here inside this uh, poorly closed plastic tube. And this looks a little bit like a thermometer probe, like what you check meat with on the grill. And it has a uh, plus side and an Alnor side, which I'm assuming is the minus. Looks a lot like this other black thing that's in our probe, or our hand wand, so let's see if we can swap these out. Put that one in, 
now we appear to have the world's uh, least convenient meat thermometer. All right, let's see if this guy works. Seems to react very quickly to heat. So it's not actually zero degrees in here. The wall thermometer says it's closer to 50 Fahrenheit. Let's see if we can adjust that Alnor device. So I'm going to turn it up to about 50. All right, I didn't have a potato to test with, so I just grabbed the top off my jack-o'-lantern and threw it in the microwave. Okay, so our Alnor analog thermometer over here is reading somewhere between 140, 150 Fahrenheit. This one's reading about 60 to 62 metric temperature. I can't get it to go into freedom units, but that's about the same. Um, 62 degrees centigrade is about 143 Fahrenheit. So yeah, the Alnor here seems somewhat accurate. There we go, about 143. Now I do have to say that the antique one here seemed to come up to the final temperature quicker than the modern one. The needle jumped right up to 140. This guy kind of crept up from 50 to 62 and it took a little bit to stabilize. So this one seems to read faster, but I'd still trust the modern one a little more if I'm cooking with it. Okay, it definitely looks like our Alnor Pyrocon works. Yeah, a cool little device for 10 bucks. So I did end up looking this thing up online, and they're not super collectible or rare. You can get them on eBay for like $20 to $50 with $10 shipping. So if you want your own, they're not that hard to find. They did seem to make a few different versions. There seems to be one that goes up to 1,200 degrees. There are some Sub-Zero ones. This is one of those uh, gadgets that's probably cooler as a decorative piece or a prop for a sci-fi film or... You could start a fake ghost hunting show or something with it. I don't have a laboratory. I don't generally have things that I need to check up to 600 degrees, but uh, I guess it's kind of cool to know that I could if I needed to. Once again, big thanks to Axeman Surplus Stores for keeping their stores open all through the pandemic, for selling random, weird, nonsense stuff that I have no idea what it is, but it's still pretty cool. Again, they don't sponsor me in any way, but I highly recommend that everybody run out and go to an Axeman store today. Whether you live in the Twin Cities or in greater Minnesota or anywhere in the Midwest or you're just passing through, stop into St. Paul, stop into one of their other store locations, buy a bunch of junk, you'll be glad you did. Check out my other videos for other random junk I found at Axeman or at surplus stores or auctions or dumpsters or just the side of the road and see what I did with it. Sometimes I turn random junk into other random junk, like my weed whacker canoe, or my surf bike boat, or my homemade railroad speeder. Anyway, that's all we got for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.